The next day, Faraday records a message to his wife. He explains that on Earth, they would be called a family, and their children would be real children and not dolls. It seems as though he's beginning to understand what emotions are. Drones on Antea have no right to choose, but on Earth, the range of choices is astounding. There can be dozens of varieties of just coffee. Even children can choose. Humans create rituals out of simple actions. For example, the ritual of family dining or talking to God. And during meals, people share their day's events. They also experience a sense of joy which Faraday wishes to experience with his wife. Each generation here produces a handful of great minds. Justin is one of them. The number of emotions experienced by people in a day is absurd. And everyone around Faraday lives in fear of some kind. The fear of failure leads Clay to meet with Finch. After a tough conversation, he still pleads for another week, as Faraday was almost done building the device. Faraday then continues to explain that on Earth, everyone has their own self, but on Antea, they are born either as knowers or drones, but here, everyone creates themselves. And people also believe in something higher, that is, in God. One day, Josiah suddenly cuts off a conversation about synthesis and leaves the table, and this marks the beginning of his changes. Then a man plays a jazz record explaining what it is and how it originated. While improvisation was inexplicable, Faraday tries to explain it to his wife. Meanwhile, Elizabeth tells Clay that the signal in the tornado came from somewhere in Southeast Asia. Also the stewardess on the plane, Faraday was on posted about it afterwards. After seeing Clay off, Elizabeth calls someone on the phone and asks for a meeting. At this time, Eddy informs his brother about the desire of oil magnate Thorn to buy half of the Origin Corporation. In London, Josiah notices a music store. He then picks up a guitar and starts playing, astonishing the salesman, but suddenly the man faints. Justin finds him in the hospital, and although doctors were sure everything was fine, Faraday tells how Josiah was born in the Bahamas and turned his genius to music and his youth. But his wife left him after their daughter was born, and the alien confesses that she shared his DNA with the old man, which is now rewriting Josiah's human genome, and what he will turn into is unknown. Josiah then leaves the house and goes to a bridge. There he finds a wasp nest and stares at it for a long time and upon returning home, starts writing an endless equation. The doctor arrives and announces that his blood oxygen level is elevated. Justin blames everything on Faraday, but suddenly, Faraday realizes that Josiah translated his daughter's equation into sound frequencies and wrote a song, the key to the synthesis process. He sets up a keyboard instrument in front of the device and asks Josiah to play its melody. Well, the man begins to play, and gradually, by changing frequencies and tempo, he manages to activate the device. Faraday joins him, and everything works out. That night, Elizabeth takes Josiah's medical chart from the doctor and reports to Clay about Faraday's successful experiment. Looking at the test results, she figures out that Newton is in Cambodia, where a cement bunker can be seen in the middle of the jungle. Clay informs Finch about this, and she forbids him to go there. But the agent sends a special force team to Cambodia. The soldiers enter the building, which turns out to be empty. But inside, they find unknown plants whose dust kills them. Clay watches this in horror through a mirror screen. Meanwhile, Molly asks her family to help her with an assignment and create a family tree. But they have no photos, so Faraday draws a very similar family portrait to which Molly asks to add him. At this time, Hutch and Iddy attend the presentation of the new oncology center of the magnate Thorn because Iddy is obsessed with the idea of using it to protect against the CIA. Clay's people try to understand what happened in the bunker of Cambodia, and Elizabeth finds power lines laid out of the bunker, but can't yet track exactly where. Josiah notices that the fingerprints are disappearing from his fingers, and he hears synapses forming in his brain, and realizes that he's becoming an Anthean. 
At Eddie's estate, a meeting begins attended by Clay. Justin realizes that he is not a scientist at all and starts suspecting that something is not right. She doesn't want Faraday to fall into the hands of those who tore Newton apart. And later, Finch reprimands Clay for the soldiers' deaths and orders him to fly to Washington. Realizing that their work could be blocked by the CIA, Justin leaves and Faraday activates the system, calling Newton to start asking questions. He doesn't understand why the launch was delayed, as it's fatal for Antea. Newton, impressed with his rebirth, advises learning to lie. To outsmart the CIA, he must make himself a legend, as Fame cannot be killed. Newton disconnects, and Elizabeth rushing into the laboratory fails to see anything. Thinking it over, Faraday suggests making their work public, as the CIA loves silence. Hutch arranges a meeting with a journalist friend, and Faraday talks about a new energy source and the CIA's threat to freeze the project. Iddy learns that a man named Clay emerged from a witness protection program. Clay at the moment tries to explain himself to a committee and shows an order signed by Finch and talks about the tape of Newton's interrogation. The woman is shocked as she did not expect much treachery from her protege. Clay gets a permission to continue the case. Elizabeth shows Justin camera footage from Cambodia, but Newton was not there, even though the bunker was sending a signal into space. Apparently, the alien was talking to his people, and warns that Clay will never allow the machine to be taken unless they catch Newton. Justin tells Faraday about the soldiers' deaths, but he doesn't believe that Newton could have killed people. That night, Clay comes to Iddy and tells her that he and his mother came to America from Russia. But the woman turned out to be a terrorist. She blew up the building where she worked, abandoning her son to fate. That's when Finch found and adopted him. And he doesn't know where his real mom is now. And he destroyed his foster mother today, and meanwhile, Faraday also finds the Cambodian recordings and hears Newton's signal to Antea. He admits to Justin that Newton deceived everyone, and he never intended to return home because he wanted to bring the Antheans here. But he, Faraday, promises to do everything to save Earth. Newton transmits the signals intercepted by the CIA, but they cannot decrypt them. Justin is sure that the machine will still be taken, so she asks her friend to take Molly away. They then rush to the laboratory, and Elizabeth immediately reports this to Clay. Faraday dismantles the machine, gives the court to Justin, orders her and Josiah to leave, and stays in the laboratory. The pair barely manage to avoid Clay and his henchmen, and agents burst into the laboratory where they are met by Faraday. But after driving away, Justin decides to return for the alien, and in the laboratory, Faraday seeing the agent detonates a gas cylinder. Later, a stunned Clay sees Josiah carrying Faraday away, but is unable to stop it. Faraday regains consciousness and names Mary's phone number. Justin calls her and drives to the monastery. The sister immediately orders the preparation of the operating room and instructs to hide the device. It turns out that Faraday lost a lot of blood, but first, the bullet must be removed. When Mary cuts the skin, strange tentacles jump out of the alien's body, frightening the sisters. But Mary assures them that he is an angel. Hutch receives an offer to sell his part of origin for a large sum. Although he doesn't understand why Magnate Thorne would want a blown-up laboratory, he agrees. In the monastery, Mary sets up women on lookout posts, and Josiah announces that he's ready to give his blood to Faraday, convincing the sisters that he's a Nephilim, half-angel, half-human. Clay's people search Justin's house, and Elizabeth finds a clue, but reports it to her mysterious contacts. At the time in the monastery, Mary confesses to Justin that she got Newton addicted to alcohol, thus ruining his life. Therefore, she asks Justin to do everything to save Faraday as she loves him, although she doesn't yet realize it. In the meantime, Clay's assistant traces a call from Justin and the agents and learns their location. Mary begins a blood transfusion operation from Josiah to Faraday. Clay's agents rush to the monastery, while Elizabeth warns someone that the alien has been found. 
Meanwhile, to buy time to complete the operation, the sisters and Mary arm themselves and fend off against the agents. A shootout begins, and Clay demands the surrender of the alien, but the sisters stand their ground. However, they run out of bullets and Mary orders everyone to run while she kneels at the altar. There, Clay finds her and the woman asks him to say his real name, and he admits that he is Ivan. But the nun corrects him, as his real name is Judas, and the agent shoots her. Hearing the shot, Justin goes into the room and encounters Clay. He orders Faraday, Justin, and the device to be taken, leaving the old man behind. Mary regains consciousness and crawls to the operating room with her last strength. She reaches Josiah's hand and dies happily. Justin's friend and Molly fall into the hands of unknown people. At the same time, Elizabeth warns Clay that they don't have the algorithm to activate the core, and he reports that he has interrogation experience. The alien and Justin are brought to a demolished laboratory and tied to chairs. Seeing Justin being beaten, Faraday confesses that the recorded signal from the tornado is an order for the remaining Antaeans to prepare for flight to Earth. Clay takes Justin to another room and orders Elizabeth to guard while he deals with Faraday. The agents start torturing and demanding to confess when and how the aliens will arrive. Elizabeth asks Justin for the algorithm, but Justin remembers how the girl betrayed her family. She allowed Clay to kill in the monastery, so how is she any better than him? Clay continues the torture, but it had no effect on the alien. And instead, Faraday manages to enrage Clay, claiming that it was Finch who used him and not the other way around. The agent orders water torture, but it turns out to be a gift for Faraday as he loves the water. Then Elizabeth remembers about the x-ray, and it truly causes Faraday pain, and he starts screaming, which Justin hears. Suddenly, Watt appears before Faraday and advises him to make something up for Clay. Elizabeth notices this and realizes that the alien is losing his mind. Watt meanwhile suggests to Faraday that Clay had two families. The alien starts saying that one family abandoned the boy, and the other he betrayed himself. This turns out to be the boy's eternal pain, and Clay gets angry and shoots Faraday in the leg. Visions of Antea, his family, and the flight flash before the alien, and he gives Clay a vision about the imminent arrival of a ship prepared by Newton. The synthesis machine is the ship's engine, but without Faraday it won't work, and the alien offers Clay to play Russian roulette. And this is because he can entrust synthesis only to someone who won't hesitate to sacrifice themselves for progress. Faraday tells Clay about his biological mother's dossier, which he found on the internet. He'll say where she is if Clay loads a bullet, spins the chamber, and pulls the trigger. The agent will have a chance to ask five questions, and if he survives, Faraday will give him the synthesis. The agent agrees to the terms, and they start the game of Russian roulette. Clay asks about the world of Antea. Faraday tells, and the agent pulls the trigger, and he survives. Finally, they get to the main question for Clay about his mother, and the alien confesses that everything with his biological mother was planned and executed by Finch. She was part of a team working on Newton, and she deliberately deprived the boy of his family and took away his name. Clay, driven mad, points the gun at Faraday, but Elizabeth who enters shoots first, killing the agent, and she contacts someone and reports that she has Faraday and Justin, and soon, people from oil magnate Thorne arrive at the bunker. Molly has been with them for a long time and is safe, and Josiah is also alive, but his illness has returned. All of them are now under Thorne's protection, as he sees the future in synthesis. The people are taken to meet the magnate, and in a vine-covered cave where Buddhist monks sit on the floor, they meet Newton. Faraday recalls how on Antea, the Norse took seeds from him that was supposed to sprout on Earth. In the present, Faraday expresses outrage over his deception, but Newton draws attention to the surrounding vegetation. 
He'd given the monks Antaea seeds in exchange for shelter and permission to observe their prayers. This area is a complete magnetic anomaly, which is why satellites see nothing and the CIA cannot find him. Therefore, no one could spot the huge spaceship that Newton built. He shows the ship to Faraday, who realizes that only the knowers should come to Earth. Faraday is shocked because it was the knowers who made all the decisions that led to Antea's demise. And the drones just followed their orders. But now, it's the knowers who must perish. Justin also realizes that after the arrival of the knowers, humans will become drones, and after all, the reborn Josiah stopped experiencing emotions and began to prioritize efficiency over love. Newton insists that only the merging of races will give Earth a chance to survive, but Justin is adamantly against it. She refuses to unlock the device algorithm, which she altered before fleeing the laboratory. She leaves and Newton forces his student to learn the algorithm, as he is destined to be the one who will greet the aliens on Earth and prevent their killing. This is because he will become a legend after becoming the head of the Origin Corporation. Faraday demands to take his family on the ship, but Newton advises forgetting about them and staying with Justin. He doesn't want to see drones on Earth. Faraday was wrongly classified as a servant because he always asks questions. Faraday finds Justin, who is disappointed in him, and demands to be taken home, but he couldn't do that until he learns the algorithm. He confesses that it was she and her family who taught him to love. Justin gives in and goes home, and they again live in their old house. Josiah's illness has returned, and the woman is disappointed, but her father reminds her of faith, which will help them endure everything. Three months later, Elizabeth visits Justin, and the woman confesses that she betrayed them for money. But now the CIA will take revenge on her, and sooner or later kill her. But before that, they will take Faraday, and Elizabeth gives her cross to Justin, and asks her for forgiveness, and Justin reveals to her Thorne's identity. Later, she accidentally finds Faraday's device, which alerts her to an approaching tornado. Justin follows its directions and enters the hurricane's eye. Meanwhile, news reports broadcast a man ready to share a new type of energy with the world. In the evening, in a huge theater, Faraday appears on stage and he begins to talk about everything that happened. Simultaneously, agents head to Justin and Hutch's home. At the theater, a sniper targets Faraday, but he pulls out the synthesis box, forcing the sniper to stop. Faraday is brought to Finch, and he refuses to answer until he sees Justin and Hutch. Although Finch is sure that she has won, the couple is brought in. Then Faraday reminds them that the controlling stake in the new Enterprise now belongs to Justin and Hutch, and without their consent, no one can do anything with the device. Faraday will fly to Antea and bring back the remaining people of his planet to Earth. Finch threatens all three with imprisonment, and in response, Faraday announces that in 12 hours, the blueprints for quantum synthesis will appear on the internet, and people will get it for free, and the USA will no longer be the world's owner. Finch threatens Justin's family, but Justin reminds her that against the system is the entire population of Earth, and now the CIA will have to worry about their safety. Later, Faraday comes to Newton, who admits that he's proud of him. Later, Faraday visits Josiah to return his hat and thank him for showing him his paternal love. He says goodbye to Molly, teaching her Antean gestures, and she gives him a logo figurine. The hardest moment for him arrives, saying goodbye to Justin, and he will bring his family there, although they might not recognize him now. But the woman is sure that everything will be as it should be. Faraday prepares for departure, while Molly and Justin plant Anthea's seeds near their house. And at night, they watch the launch from a distant star. At times very naive, at times deep and subtle, with philosophy, with reflections on family values, but overall, lovers of science fiction should really enjoy it.